let's look at the relationship between the electric field E and the electric potential V through the lens of multivariable calculus. It's actually not that complicated. E is a vector field that's conservative and is associated with the potential function minus V. As such, E is equal to the gradient of minus V or minus the gradient of V is how we typically write that. And that's if you want to derive the electric field E in terms of the electric potential V. And that's what we're going to do in our examples here because we haven't really done that. Of course, you could flip the whole thing around and derive the change in the potential function VB minus VA by computing the line integral of E from A to B. That would be the other part of this statement here. So we have done a bunch of problems computing VB minus VA for a given electric field. So I don't want to do that again. What I want to do is the other side, where if we can find the electric potential, then by taking minus the gradient of the electric potential, we get the electric field. And it turns out in practice that this is a very useful tool because it's typically very easy to find by superposition the electric potential at a point because you're just adding scalars. Once you have a function that represents the electric potential, you take minus gradient and you get the electric field. Now, of course, there's a gradient in Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z, but also in cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates. So we're going to do one example of each just to remind ourselves of the expression of the gradient so that we've seen all three cases before we start to do more problems. So in Cartesian coordinates, E is going to be equal to minus the gradient of V. And in terms of components, that's partial V, partial X, partial V, partial Y, partial V, partial Z. Those are going to be the three components of the electric field. So it's going to be minus, and here are our so if we have v of x, y, z is x squared, y cubed, e to the x, z, we are going to get 2x, y, e to the x, z. We need the product rule because we're going to get here x squared, y cubed times z, e to the x, z. And then partial v, partial y is going to be 3y squared, x squared, e to the xz. And then the third component, partial v, partial z, is going to be x cubed, y cubed, e to the xz. As a reminder, if you didn't follow there, it's the chain rule. e to the u prime is u prime, e to the u. Careful that you're taking the derivative or the partial derivative relative to z here. So that gives you the following components of the electric field when you start with the electric potential that's given up here. So that's for Cartesian coordinates. It's the most common case. For cylindrical coordinates, let's take v is r squared over z squared sine theta cosine theta under the condition that z cannot be zero, of course, because you can't divide by zero. And let's compute the components of the electric field. E is going to be minus the gradient of V, and that's minus the following vector. So it's going to be partial V, partial R, that's easy. Then don't forget that it's 1 over R, partial V, partial theta. And then down here it's going to be partial v, partial z. So that's minus the following vector. Taking with respect to r, we're going to get the partial derivative equal to 2r over z squared sine of theta, cosine of theta. Then we're going to get 1 over r and we need to use the product rule here. We're going to get r squared over z squared. Actually, 
that would factor out. So let me do this be a little bit more logical. Multiply 1 over r by this, factoring out r squared over z squared. Then we're going to get sine theta differentiates into cosine theta. That gives me cosine squared of theta. And then cosine differentiates into minus sine. So I get minus sine squared of theta. And this is the product rule, of course. And so here's our second component, our theta component. And then relative to z, it's easy. We get minus 2 r squared z cubed sine of theta cosine of theta. And then finally, to wrap this up, let's look at spherical coordinates because the gradient is a bit more complicated in spherical coordinates. We're going to have E is minus the gradient of V, and that is going to be the following vector. It's going to be partial V, partial rho, then it's going to be 1 over rho, partial V, partial theta, and then 1 over rho sine of theta, partial V, partial theta. So that gives us the following vector. It's going to be first component 2 rho sine phi sine of theta, then 1 over rho, so that leaves us with rho sine of phi, and we're taking the derivative, or the partial derivative relative to theta, so sine theta turns into cosine of theta. And then 1 over rho sine of theta, that's going to leave 1 rho upstairs, and then partial v, partial phi for sine of phi, that's going to be cosine of phi. So overall, not that complicated. I mean, you know how to take partial derivatives, so that's easy. It's really a matter of realizing that it's much easier to get v at a point and then use e as minus gradient of v if you can to find the electric field than to maybe find the electric field from scratch. Not always true. I mean, of course, Gauss's law makes it quite easy to find the electric field, and we've talked about that. But this is another method to add to the arsenal and to keep in mind if you're trying to find the electric field. And also remember, of course, that the expression of a gradient depends on the coordinate system that you're using. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.